Reject Nation, it is time for more Koi's Comic Corner. I am very excited to be joining you guys today. We're going to be talking about DC's upcoming slate. But first, I want to remind you to leave a like. Those help me out to keep this show going. Also, comment, subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified of all these shows coming at you. And again, thank you for being so supportive of Koi's Comic Corner. I am honored to be here. Let's talk about DC's slate. Now, usually, I give you guys a breakdown of where we are with DC or where we are with this comic property or where the rumors are or what comics to read, etc. That's what I like this channel corner to be about. But in this case, I want to go a little different and just give you an onslaught of information and then just give you some general DC comic and recommendations at the end. I'm going to give you 20 different movies in various stages of development. These are the top 20 either in development fully made post-production or rumored properties coming out of DC films because I want to see in a year or two which one of these actually came to pass. I think it's going to be really interesting with all of the shakeups over at DC because of the big, big discovery merger. A lot of the big higher ups are getting shaken up. A lot of the movies that were almost happening have been canceled. A lot of things might get greenlit, but I think it'll be really interesting to look back at this video in a year or two and see what actually came to pass. Some of these we obviously know are coming out. Obviously, Black Black Adam, etc. We'll get into that. But first, let's dive into the giant slate of maybe movies over at DC. First one I want to talk about just got confirmed with a title that is Joker 2 Folie à Deux. I'm not French, even though my last name is. I'm sorry to every French speaking person for that pronunciation. This means the madness of two. Joker 2, the madness of two. I think that it's going to be really cool to play with the mythology outside of the world of Batman some more because we saw a young Bruce Wayne in Joker. I never personally, my opinion, want to see Joaquin's Joker go up against a Batman. I think it's much much more interesting to have that live separately. I personally want Robert Pattinson to have his Barry Keown. I want to see other Batmans have their Joker, but I like Joaquin Phoenix's Joker being over there, having an Elseworld, living in that world. Hey guys, Coy's out of town. Otherwise, I'd have him do the pickup here himself, but he actually did a Joker video talking about the whole Lady Gaga casting here that's going to be a musical. We shot this before that news broke but yeah cut out a lot of other stuff he was speculating on here but you can go check that one out we've got the flash movie up next i don't think a movie has ever had more of a struggle with a single individual ever i mean there are obviously people that mess up in life and there are obviously asterisks and yes things have been more problematic there are directors that have done horrible things there are actors that have done horrible things there are people that are bad but i don't know if the consistency has been hit. I know it must be a struggle for the fine folks at WB to be navigating the news cycles, and I really hope Ezra Miller can navigate what he's going through. I really hope that they find what peace they can when they can. That said, it's been like a monthly news cycle situation, so I don't know what DC and Warner Brothers can do with The Flash, because by the time it comes out, we keep hearing more and more things. We keep hearing rumors that they may be adding in a post credit scene, maybe recasting via Flashpoint. It is very expensive to recast. It is very tricky to this late in the game change things, and I personally... I don't know Ezra. I want Ezra to find what solace he can. And, and clearly there's some lashing out happening. So for the sake of the film, I'm very excited to see Michael Keaton back as Batman. I'm very excited to see Flashpoint. I'm very excited for the surprises. I'm very excited as a Batfleck fan to get to say bye to Batfleck. I love Ben Affleck's portrayal as Batman. I really, truly, I'll take any frame of Affleck's Batman in a movie. So I'm excited for this film. But on the more human real elements, I don't know how they're going to promote it. I don't know how they're going to end it. I don't know how they're going to continue that story on. And I want the human that is Ezra to get the help they need. And I want the studio that is Warner Brothers to find a compromise to have this movie come out because I really want to see it. We'll see what happens in between there. Next up, we've got Blue Beetle. This is really high on my list because it looks incredible from leaked photos. I do not talk about paparazzi photos. It's a rule of mine. I do not believe in them because frankly, seeing an unfit, it's like you go into a, a, a museum and there's a pencil drawing. That's not fair to compare to this beautiful lush monet a finished product is what you should experience that is presented to you if you see a leaked shot of a costume usually it needs the augmentation of post-production usually it needs a little zhuzhing up with some cgi because comics aren't real i know for me to say that is sacrilege but rarely do i see a comic book costume that looks like it was ripped off the page in a paparazzi photo leaked images of the blue beetle suit came out and i am gobsmacked this looks incredible i've seen nothing official and i'm so overjoyed 
annoyed at how incredible it looks. And Homeboy from Karate Kid is awesome. So the casting's great. The look is great. Blue Beetle's a really fun character. Hope we get a little booster gold action. I think Zac Efron might be a little old for Human Torch at this point, depending on how young they go, because he's friends with Tom Holland Spider-Man. I digress. He'd be a great booster gold. Give me Zac Efron's booster gold in the Blue Beetle movie, even as a cameo. Very excited for Blue Beetle. And very quickly, Blue Beetle is a very <laughs> industrious, for hire at times superhero that's often down on his luck that navigates the world opposite Booster Gold, who is a very, very social media inherent uh, superhero. So Blue Beetle's got money, Booster Gold needs attention, and they team up very often in the comics, offering a very different dynamic duo situation. So, Booster Gold is not confirmed, but it's kind of like if you make a Robin movie, you expect Batman. Not to belittle Blue Beetle, but they, they kind of go together. All right, next up, we've got Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. This is high because I don't know how you make a sequel to a movie with an octopus playing drums. I don't know how you go crazier, and inherently sequels get crazier. Inherently, you have escalation. I personally like the Aquaman movie I got. It made a billion dollars, so a lot of other people did too. Is it the comics? Absolutely not. Is it a blast? Absolutely. Do I want a sequel? Yes. What is it? I don't know. Will it have Amber Heard in it? Maybe. Uh, but I am, however, getting reports in my lack of earbud ear. They did talk about it at the trial at some point, and uh, Walter Hamada did say it was a buddy movie between Patrick Wilson and Jason Momoa, and that's about the main headline I got out of that craziness. So we do have a little bit of taste and tone of what that movie's going to be, and you guys know I love a buddy movie, so Aquaman is a buddy movie. Give me that. All right, next up, we've got Black Adam. This is is a movie I think that's going to combine the strengths of The Rock's properties and the strengths of DC Universe's scope. I do think that it's going to be a very rock-centric movie. We just got the first trailer. It looks like a rock movie. There's a certain kind of humor and action and levity The Rock brings to his properties. We know how hands-on he is. We know that Seven Bucks Productions is very, very much a part of the script, a part of the edit, a part of the whole journey. So I think we're going to see the most rock movie possible within the DC Universe. And that's going to be interesting because I think DC who's doing a very good job at diversifying their content. I think a shared universe works and it doesn't have to. I like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but there are times that I imagine people are exhausted. They're like, I have to watch a six hour show. I've got to watch a three hour movie. Got... You don't have to do that with DC. You can just watch these movies. So I think it's really important, especially with Black Adam, that people that are fans of The Rock don't necessarily have to watch everything DC's doing. I think that people that are fans of the DC Universe, they don't have to watch every single property coming out. It's a win-win. I think this movie's gonna make a lot of money. I think The Rock is dedicated. He 11 years in pre-production hell. Really excited for this one, if only because of the sheer zeal coming out of The Rock. We'll see what it actually translates to, and that's coming up soon. That was your top five. I realize I've already talked way too long, so we're going to speed up here with six through 20. Number six, we got Shazam! Fury of the Gods. This is coming out very soon. It is a sequel to the first Shazam. I think my favorite DC property of all. I love that first movie. This is going to have the kids growing up. We actually have Mary Marvel being herself as both iterations of Marvel, so clearly aging is an element, and I love the tone, the Amblin Toad that David F. Sandberg was able to accomplish. Can't wait to see the sequel. Then we've also got the Superman reboot coming from J.J. Abrams. Now, this is interesting because I've heard we're getting a Val Zod series from Michael B. Jordan, and it's rumored that we're going to have a Black Clark Kent in this Superman reboot. So, I'm curious to see which of these properties comes out first, how they might interact with each other. I know that J.J. is not directing it. I believe it's uh, not... Ta Nahasi Coates that's going to be handling the directing duties. I love JJ as a producer. I'm really curious, especially because he was attached to a Superman flyby property that was supposed to come out way before the Brandon Routh one did. So I know he loves Superman. Excited for that property and to see how it develops. We've also got a Batgirl property, which is going to be originally set for HBO Max that is now going to theaters. There was so much uproar about it being an HBO Max release that it actually got bumped up to a theatrical release. More of that. I love my theatrical releases and I love the character of Batgirl. Very curious to see Barbara Gordon. And we do have J.K. Simmons reprising his role as Commissioner Gordon, which means it is somewhat tied into the universe, but it does come out after Flashpoint. Just like we had the great J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson in No Way Home, he seemed to be a different J.J. Jameson in No Way Home than the original. We might have that with Commissioner Gordon, but we also have the little fact that Michael Keaton is in this as well. Does it tie into the Tim Burton universe post-Flashpoint? Is it a Batman Beyond kind of vibe where he is a mentor? Very curious to see how this translates. Really excited for this Batgirl movie. We've also got Wonder Woman 3. This is presumably from Patty Jenkins. I am a giant, giant proponent for the first one. It's my number two DC property, I think, after Shazam, right before The Suicide Squad. Huge Wonder Woman fan. I really want them to get back in that, like, beautiful, magical, 
overwhelming scope of the first, and I think they will. I think DC is smart. They're going to take some notes about what didn't work in the second and give us a huge third. And at number 10, we've got The Batman 2. This is something I want to do an entire video about. So if you're a fan of Koi's Comic Corner, let me know that's something you want to see. I've got an idea of what the entire trilogy, yes, The Batman 3 is rumored, how I would shape it, what I would do. But as of now, we are confirmed for a The Batman 2. I think it might be Mr. Freeze. I think it also might have some setup for the Court of Owls, which ends up being the third movie. But again, I'm gonna make a whole video about that. We've also got Zatanna. This is the one that I'm most worried about that I'm also most excited for. So if those top 10 were my most anticipated, this is the one where I'm like, all right, now we're getting into the does this exist territory, which is fitting for the second half of this list. Zatanna is a magician. She is awesome. She has magic powers. Technically, she can take out Superman because Homeboy can't handle magic. She's a very interesting character. She's got a really iconic look and she's often written incredibly fun. She's very, very captivating and often a member of the Dark Justice League. So please have Zatanna exist. I want it. My next most anticipated in the I don't know if it'll happen is Nightwing. This movie has been in development forever. It has had the same director attached for as long as I can remember. And I do believe this is the thing that would expand out the Batman universe without needing the Batman. I think you can much easier make a Nightwing movie without Batman than say, a Robin movie or even a Batgirl movie. I think you can make a Nightwing movie and have Dick Grayson fully formed and in Bloodhaven. Give me that Nightwing movie. Next up, we've got Static Shock. This is our 13th property. Static Shock has been in development for a few years, but got some heat at DC Fandom when it was confirmed. They announced a writer. They announced a team. I keep hearing Michael B. Jordan might be involved as producer. I can't get confirmation on that, but I do think this is something that HBO Max could use. I want it to be theatrical, but I love that 90s animated series. It's a comic book that's really important. It's a comic book that addresses more street level things. It's a comic book that addresses interpersonal relationships, much like Spider-Man does. And I love the actual character of Static himself. And I think they could do some really cool things playing with tone. And I, I think it's a really special property. Static Shock is a really cool character that has electric based powers, but he uses them more ingenuity based ways. So he's got like a disc, right? And he can fly around on it because of static electricity. So he wields it not like electro directly. He actually, you know, he can zap people, but he also uses it to fly. He also uses it to power certain things. It's a really almost STEM based idea where it's using electricity in inventive and science based ways instead of the more traditional zap zap. We've also got Black Canary. This has been in development for quite some time. She is the on and off again love interest of Green Arrow. She's a character that is very hard to translate correctly, but I think if you do it right, is a very empowering character. She is a fascinating take on a lot of uh, strong feminist ideals that I think if they land will really empower a lot of people. And I think that her costume is inherently empowering if you do it right. So as much as I want to see a lot of these other characters, I'd love to see Black Canary handled deftly because she's really funny. She's really intimidating at the right times in all the right ways. Next up, we have Supergirl. Speaking of characters, I'd love to see to get time to shine in a full feature length film. This is a character I've actually struggled with. This is a character who does doesn't always work in the comics for me. This is a character that when written poorly feels like, hey, what if Superman was a girl? But when they write her correctly, she's the cousin of Kal-El that has her own journey, that's been through her own struggles, that has a lot of different issues with her powers that I personally recently loved the Tom King run. There's a, a Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow series that one, that's a great just title. It's a play on Man of Tomorrow, but also like Supergirl into Woman, Woman of Tomorrow, her evolution, her journey from a Supergirl to a Superwoman. All of that's great. But Supergirl is a character that is really hard to find the pathos in. That's really hard to find the connection to if she's not written well. Tom King's run connected me to her in a way that I hadn't been before. So I highly recommend that run and I really hope that the Supergirl movie can feel the same. And I want little girls to have a character to look up to. I mean, there's so many beautiful female-led stories I've already mentioned here, but I really want DC fans to not just have Wonder Woman. I want little girls to not just have these characters that they're like, oh, this character feels like me. And I think Supergirl can do that for a lot of people. We've also got the Untitled Man of Steel sequel. I hope it exists. I want it. I need it. Will it happen? Will Henry Cavill get to put on the suit that he has in his closet ever again? I hope so. This is low on the list because I don't know if it'll ever happen. I want to believe it'll happen. It's the one I could use the most. Give me Man of Steel 2. Henry Cavill is Superman. Let him fly. Lobo, I love. I love the character Lobo. Number 17, Lobo. This man is DC's answer to Deadpool. This man fights Santa Claus. This man has so many weird space hijinks. Imagine a space pirate Deadpool. Imagine Captain Jack Sparrow, but he's jacked and he talks like basically Jason Momoa would have been perfectly cast if he wasn't Aquaman. I want that kind of rough and tumble biker from space. He's got a giant space hog and flies around 
thieving, pillaging. He's an anti-hero that actually feels like an anti-hero, but he's written really fun. And like I said, he fights Santa Claus from time to time. That's how little beeps he gives. I don't know if we swear yet in Koi's Comic Corner. I digress. Next up. Black Hawk. This is the first of two that I don't think will ever exist. This was a movie that Steven Spielberg was attached to. I had the middle section that was maybes with a side of doubt. Now that we're past Man of Steel, stronger doubt. Next up, we've got one that was just canceled. It could get revived though. Since it was just canceled at the top of the Discovery merger, depending how far along they were, I could see it coming back. It is the Wonder Twins movie. The Wonder Twins are an iconic duo from the Super Friends era. And you know, they're the people that they do like hands and they turn into one's a water, one's an animal. They're crazy, but I think think it could work for a younger audience. I think depending on how well DC Super Pets does, I could see Wonder Twins being revived. And I do think we need to also appeal to a younger audience. Joker, very dark and adult. Birds of Prey, very dark and adult. The Batman, very dark and adult. We do have Shazam, which is you know, about kids, but there's crazy demons that eat people and throw them out of buildings. I think there could be some things that are geared just towards kids, and I think Wonder Twins would be a great one. And finally, my number 20 of any DC character next to Mr. Miracle, which I don't know if we'll ever get, but I really, really wanted. We were supposed to get a property from Ava DuVernay and Tom King, but I really want it to happen. I don't think it ever will, called New Gods. Next to Mr. Miracle, the comic character I want. Plastic Man. Plastic Man officially as a writer. I don't know if that means development is further along or if they've just accepted one of the scripts, but... Plastic Man recently got some movement and it is officially, technically, on the DC slate. And those are 20 DC properties I hope we get. And this was hopefully under 20 minutes. It has been humbling to be here on Reject's channel without the OG Real Rejects, because I'm considering myself one now. I just said OG because I'm the new blood. Koi's Comics Corner is because of folks like you. Uh, I got so many comments talking about wanting me to have my own thing here, and then the first video did so well. I'm honored to be here with more stuff. This was a different format, so if you guys also like these mega lists, leave a comment below. Let me know it works. I also hope some of these comic recommendations I gave you, if you want any of these characters, specific comic runs, I couldn't. I gave you 20. I couldn't give you each one, but if there's anyone you specifically want to know, leave a comment. If there's any video you want from this list of 20 where I can extrapolate in the usual format out, let me know. And if you want any questions answered directly, you can find me on TikTok. You can leave a comment here below. You can find me on Twitter. Hunt me down on the internet. I want to share my comic zeal with you. And that's what we're doing right here. I appreciate y'all. We'll see you next time on Koi's Comic Corner.